Welcome to another Transformers Revenge of the Fallen review. This time we're going to be looking at uh, the Voyager class bludgeon figure, which is part of the new subline for Revenge of the Fallen uh, Nest Global Line. So here we have Bludgeon in his vehicle commode, which is a very nice little tank. Well, it's little compared to a leader class uh, brawl, but it is a little bit bigger than uh, the deluxe class raw figure. It does actually have these, these type of uh, side missile launchers just like uh, Brawl did which I really like and, and these don't light up there and they're a little bit more uh, solid feeling. He has his cannon here in the front which does pull out later on to become one of his swords. He does have two Decepticon symbols on both sides. One on both sides. One here on the back. On the other side more towards the front which is a little weird. Uh, other than that, there's nothing much to him. The detail is pretty nice, nothing too extraordinary. He does have four little tiny wheels on the bottom that do allow it to roll a little bit, but uh, some pieces here in the middle do tend to touch the ground, touch the table, whatever, to kind of slow down so it's more or less you know, sliding against the table. But it's a really nice little uh, vehicle mode. Um, it's not my favorite tank mode. My favorite is still uh, leader class brawl as far as tank modes go. But it's by no means as bad as a uh, universe Galvatron. It's it's just a pretty average little tank mode. Uh, no fire missile because of the gimmick of this becoming a sword later on. But yeah, it's a uh, Step, but it's definitely not the showcase of the figure that will come later on. But yeah, just based on the vehicle mode here, he's not bad at all. To start the transformation, first I'm just going to pull out this whole uh, front end of the turret, which will become a sword, and just set that aside for now. And then I'm going to take these treads here and detach them, which is a uh, rubber, and they come off in a very similar fashion that a uh, deluxe. Uh, Rampage did, which is very nice. And these aren't as difficult to put back on there. You don't have to feel like you're stretching them to put them back. Go to the back here. Detach these little side pieces here and fold them back. One, there you go. And doing that will uh, pull out this little se section here that you can put in one of his blades later and then go look at it from the bottom take this here go to the side which will become his legs flip this little section up and flip this all the way around and then this part is a little tricky because these will tend to get stuck so I like to go ahead and just start folding in the waist here and then you can finish securing that in place and you can see this will form kind of like a skirt type thing flip the legs around and you can see it has a little bit of a mech alive gimmick there in the legs or you can see kind of like a skeleton like innards which is pretty neat Fold these back pieces up and fold out his feet like that. And if they if his toes didn't, if his back toe thing didn't come out, fold that out. Then fold these pieces back down. So you got the bottom half done. And then. Take the top section here and split it down the middle, and then rotate this down, and then you can go and fold down the arms, get those out of the way, and swing them out, fold out the hands, like that. I, I can see a little better this on this one, like that, and then fold these pieces down, get this a little out of the way, and then take this entire waist section here and push it up to reveal his head, very neat, 
and fold down this little piece here. And then go around to the back here. Take take this here and fold it out and reveal the second blade which is really neatly stored right there and I like to tilt it like this just so this is uh, facing more up and then take his uh, main I guess katana and put it into his oh wrong one and put it into his sheath right there and there you have bludgeon in robot mode which is a very nice uh, representation of the character bludgeon uh, from the comics and it gives him kind of a more of a movie feel to him and is it's the first original bludgeon figure they've been a couple of repaints of figures such as wreckage from the first movie to kind of and call him uh, bludgeon but this is the first one that actually is more based on the uh, comic book character and one of his features is of course you can take his sword here and put in either his hands which is a little difficult actually because you kind of have to really force it in there like that and his other blade is stored up top and you can either put that in this little section here or you can put it in his other hand I like to just leave it right there and yes, uh, it was act I was actually surprised that you could actually leave this uh, blade in the backpack because I was actually having trouble finding it at first until I realized that it was actually stored in there. I thought it was going to be uh, by itself in a bag or something, but still really neat. One of the coolest features I've seen in Transformers is this, is this uh, whole mechanism here. And it's one of my favorite parts of the figure. Um, articulation is awesome in the in the arms. He has two in his elbow and swivels and a little bit of wrist articulation. He does have kind of a hollow gap right here, which I really don't mind too badly, but it's not too bad. And he, even though his feet do look a little awkward, he does stand surprisingly well without any effort at all. And his Decepticon symbol from one side shows on his hip here. And I really love the detail in his face. Let me, let me position everything. You can see he has a very skeletal look about it. There's part in the little shadow right there. But it has red eyes, kind of, and not really human skeleton like, but it looks like it could be an alien skeleton, which makes sense for. The character. Overall, it's a great update to the comic book character of Bludgeon, and this is one was one of my favorites that I was looking forward to. That in uh, Deluxe Class Ratchet, and I'm glad he's a must-have in any addition to anyone's collection. If you're a G1 fan, because he was in the G1 comics, get him. If you're a movie fan, this is going to be a great character, great character to add to your collection because he's not just a basic robot. He has a, he definitely looks evil and brings in design elements from the G Generation One comic and and just updates a little bit. So it's you, it can be a universal collector collect, collector item for. G1 peers and new movie fans. So, highly recommended, great figure. Uh, until next time, thank you for watching.